What's going on? Play by play game here back with another episode of the video. And today we're talking about Jacko in RTA and regular arena. So as a heads up, uh, the way that we have her built is on a speed death pen set. She's around like 240-ish speed, 50-50 uh, crit. Uh, so if you saw our summon video, she still has the exact same build. Uh, so 95 crit. Uh, 300 crit damage plus on Draco plate. So she's almost like 320 ish crit damage, uh, 3300 attack, not insane attack. Uh, also, zero mullahs. And surprisingly, she still hit pretty hard. Uh, in this first matchup, we do get countered pretty hard by the rim. Uh, so that is something that uh, you got to watch out for because she is an RGB unit. So something to really keep in mind. Also, uh, we did have to bring in a setup unit, meaning uh, we had to bring in an opener that was going to debuff or guarantee us a debuff on any target. So that way we can get the bonuses for her S3. And you'll see here, she deals pretty decent damage. Uh, 18K here, we guarantee the kill uh, with that attack break. Uh, and then you can follow up with the S1 into another target and then proc the extra attack. Uh, that's almost, again, uh, pretty huge damage comparable to the S3, right? Again, zero molas. Uh, in this fight, uh, we are, again, bringing in Conquered Lilius just because she is going to be faster uh, than my Jacko and more than likely will be able to uh, hit someone with the death break. And then after that, you'll see we nuke out this Landy for like 20k on the S3. Uh, for whatever reason, I keep forgetting that Jacko actually gives herself attack buff. So uh, there were plenty of times where we didn't have to push her up, uh, but we did. And, uh, and she gave herself attack buff anyway. But uh, you'll see here, we actually go with the Kawaric as the opener. Uh, we don't get the kill, uh, but... Her S2, her passive, uh, is what we were bringing her for as well. And you'll see we brought her in with SSB just to see if we can get some stuns uh, from the passive of SSB. And uh, believe it or not, she actually works pretty well uh, as a stun machine whenever we're not stunned ourselves. But uh, you'll see we kind of recover here a little bit. Uh, once we're able to cleanse, uh, our Amelia is on Omega Resistance right now. We're testing out a different build on her, uh, especially with the Frenzy changes where all the Soul Weavers get that plus 20 speed added on. So uh, she is insanely fast. Uh, and as you can see, since our SSB is pretty slow, uh, those chains of Kron uh, are there for a good amount of time. Now, keep in mind the chain of Kron or Chiron, one of those. Uh, but just keep in mind that it's a 25% chance to stun uh, for one turn and it can't be dispelled. So as soon as you start the battle, that's gonna be applied to the unit in the back row. Uh, you'll see here, we'll, we'll take out that uh, Summer Asaria and then proc the extra attack into this Kawaric and then kind of uh, finish up with the Huayang. Uh, after that, it's pretty much GG. So if you are more a, of a, I would say like a cleaver, fast aggro player, I think you're you're really gonna enjoy her. She was a lot of fun. Uh, we tried our best to bring Jacko in with some type of AOE unit in the back. Uh, other than that Huayang game, uh, we tried our very best to do that. But uh, I think that if we were set up to cleave or if we were cleave players, uh, we probably would have had better luck with her. Uh, you'll see in this one, we actually bring in a shadow squad uh, with uh, with the Jacko. So uh, we bring in the harem with uh, with Mediator Kuwerik. We got Briar Witches Seria. We recently plus 15 her. Uh, so we're able to deal some decent damage. Uh, and the great thing about Jacko is that she can set herself up for the S1 into her extra attack. And so she uh, actually procs her extra attack if you have a target or if you're hitting a target with a debuff, uh, even if they don't have any debuffs on them, uh, if you stun with her S1, 
that actually procs her extra attack. Uh, so she could potentially one shot a unit like we did with that uh, Spirit Isolene, where even though she wasn't debuffed, we were actually able to land the stun on her and then proc the extra attack and then just finish her off with the Briar Witch's Seria. And you'll see here we go into the Rem, we give ourselves attack buff. Uh, that Rem uh, or Rimuru is actually actually has a debuff on him so we get the extra damage proc and you'll see there we actually take out two units uh with one attack so that's something to really take a look at uh and try to work into your comp uh so we did bring her into regular arena uh rta was a bit iffy with her she is a bit squishy on this build uh so you're definitely gonna want to uh take out units as fast as possible. I think that in regular arena, she also does a pretty good job. Uh, she is a lot of fun whenever we can proc some stuns with whatever unit we brought in the back, uh, in that back slot. But uh, if we're trying to play her bruiserish, that's where this build kind of failed because she is paper thin. Uh, I think our bulk stats are only like uh, 10k HP and maybe like 1k defense. Uh, I know some people out there are going to build her on counter, uh, like a Omega tanky counter set. I think that could definitely work. Uh, but again, uh, she is going to need a lot of investment, I think. If you do put her on like a bruiser set, uh, she is taking out units left and right, especially with that extra attack. So as you see there, she did 6k damage and then she's going to proc her extra attack here. Uh, she's going to do another 9k and that Ravi had no chance. So she does almost as much damage with her S1 extra attack. So S1 into extra attack as she does with her S3. And again, that's with zero molas. So just keep that in mind. So I could definitely see a bruiser build that way but she probably will need uh some molas there were a couple of times where the zero molas uh didn't get us the kill and i believe it was like in a few uh, matches where we just didn't have enough damage if we don't land debuffs but against grass units especially against grass units that have an attack break like you saw that landy just got demolished 20k again zero molas she gives herself attack buff she has her own built-in rage set, pretty much, Caladra, whatever you want to call it, uh, dealing more damage to any target that is debuffed. So uh, you're going to want to play her with a control comp or at least any other unit on your team that can give you the highest chance to land some debuffs. So you'll see her paired a lot here with Conqueror Lilius. Uh, our para wasn't built. Uh, we... From the last time, I think we moved our para gear back onto Sid just because that gear is not tanky at all. You'll see some stuns here coming out from the SSB. Uh, she did stun in regular arena and RTA a few times here and there, uh, but I don't. I think it's more of a fun factor. The stuns, whenever you do get it, it is kind of like, uh, oh, we got some stuns with the SSB. That's pretty nice. Uh, but I can, again, definitely see her as like a like a cleave follow-up or a finisher, uh, especially with those stuns. Uh, those stuns can really make uh, someone have a bad day. But uh, I think overall she's okay. I don't think that she is a 100% must-pull unit. Like, you need to pull this unit now. Uh, so, like, someone like Conquer Lilius was, I think. Uh, but... She is pretty good if you favor that aggressive play style. Uh, so you'll see here in uh, one of the last ones, uh, we actually outspeed here. We hit that Conquer Lilius with the silence debuff, and then we're able to guarantee ourselves a kill on that Conquer Lilius. Uh, we do get assessed here, but uh, that's okay uh, because we can just go with the S1. And so this is where she kind of falls short. If there are no debuffs, and you try to S1, it's it's pretty much GG for her because she's not going to survive any kind of attack. 
uh, because she is very paper thin. So we get a second shot here, going up against that Conqueror Lilias one more time, but this time we get the kill. Uh, so we're gonna try to debuff this Ada. Debuffing the Ada here actually gives us a shot uh, because more than likely we're gonna have to wait a few turns uh, and we do get the crit there and you'll see the follow-up with the extra attack not not do, doing enough damage but that helps us just survive a little bit longer uh, you'll see here is our jacko like i mentioned uh, she is 3300 attack uh, 1k defense 10k hp uh, 242 speed, 95 crit, 297 crit damage, uh, with the Draco plate giving her an additional 27% crit damage. So putting her at like what 320-ish uh, effectiveness. Ideally, we would have zero effectiveness here and pump that into the crit chance, right? So that she can have a 100% crit chance bonus there. Here she is, zero molas. I think that if you can play her in that control cleave or control aggro comp she's gonna do really really well for you she is a very fun unit uh, i did enjoy getting some stuns uh, with that unit in the back row especially ssb it's a lot of fun getting some stuns with ssb especially on the counters uh, but i think mola priority for her you want to guarantee yourself a kill on the s3 so for sure it's going to be a plus five on the s3 after that, I think you want some damage on the S1. Uh, if no damage at all, you want the effect chance as high as possible. So you're probably gonna go max molas on the S3 and then plus three molas on the 10 effect chance here. So that way it's a 40% chance. It just gives you a higher chance to stun. And again, because she can activate herself, getting that stun on a unit that doesn't have a debuff is pretty huge. Uh, because then she goes into her extra attack, which deals a pretty decent amount of damage. Uh, the S2 here uh, gives herself a 15 or gives everybody a 15% combat readiness. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I, I think if, if you don't really need to, Trick or Treat is going to be the last on the priority list. Uh, so whenever we get her to level 10 friendship, we are going to pump that into the minus one turn cooldown. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, it's a four turns, so down to three turns, but she never survived longer than maybe one or two turns. Uh, if we survived any longer than that, uh, we were probably dead or I don't know what was going on. So on this build, she is paper thin, but deals pretty significant damage. Let me know your thoughts. Have you tested her out? What do you think about Jacko? Have you pulled for her yet? Are you still waiting uh, for some more testing? We need to test her out in GVG, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, like always, if you haven't enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hey, think about subscribing. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people like you who like content like this. Like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.